working for more than three decades, she has continually reinvented herself, playing the femme fatale, the arrogant socialite, the sultry older woman. Her films include Hannah and Her Sisters, The Last Temptation of Christ, and Beaches, among others. She's near covering ground forged by actresses like Susan Sarandon and Catherine Deneuve, cool beauties tempted by age, revealing a greater depth of character. Her latest role is in James Campion's adaptation of the Henry James novel Portrait of a Lady. It has already earned her a Golden Globe nomination and the Los Angeles Film Critics Award for Best Supporting Actress. And I'm pleased to have her here, and congratulations. Well, thanks, thanks. Yeah. I'm told, that knowing that, that you're not one that sort of runs out to, to uh, seek out publicity, that, but you feel strongly about this film, mm. so that you wanted to do whatever, you know. Yeah. What, what is it about this film that makes you so... Well, it isn't... Well, I, there are a lot of things about this film. Um, sometimes I feel like it needs explaining a little bit, and uh, I want to support it. I, I really think uh, that it's really complex, and people who see it more than once seem to get a lot more out of it. And uh, I just want to... Uh, I'm proud to be in it, and yeah. I just want to... You lobbied uh, for the part? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, very did much Jane so. say what? I mean, when you went to see her or wrote her or whatever? I had to audition. Yeah. And uh, I, I prepared for five days. Uh, How did you prepare other than reading well, Henry one of, James forever? Forever. That's one of the... That's yeah. took part of the five days. But also, uh, I don't know. There was a lot of preparation. I, I pulled all of his descriptions of her out of the book and lined them up. And I had read the first the script first before the book, which I'm glad about because I read the script with no preconceived ideas and a lot of the ideas I had from the script were very close to, I was pleased to find out it was really what James was, was expressing a lot and it was just confirmed as I read the book. And mainly as I, led, as I had them all out, they were so contradictory and that's what fascinated me. What was contradictory? The descriptions of Madame Merle. Uh. Um, she, it was, she's a very complicated person, and, yeah. and, uh, and in every scene there's, there's a lot of uh, op oppositional feelings for, going on. For the benefit of people who have not read the book uh, or seen the film yet, tell me who she is, you know, That's and, and how she changes. Well, the thing that is, is so incredible about the part is she's very hard to describe. I'm usually pretty good at it. And the biggest description uh, would reveal the end of the movie, and I don't yeah, want right, to do that. Right. But uh, she's really defined herself. She's an American who was brought over to uh, Europe when she was about six in Victorian times. And in that society where they care about money and position, she had neither. And so she created herself. I liken it a lot to Cary Grant, that he was born Archie Leach, and he right. created Cary Grant, right. and he actually became Cary Grant. It right. wasn't a lie. That's really who he was. That's sort of what she did. And she made herself this sort of perfection, as close as she could get, of the Victorian ideal of yeah. a certain kind of woman. And she was talented. She painted, and she, she uh, played piano, and she was ornamental, and she was provocative and a great conversationalist. And people liked having her around. And that's sort of, it's sort of like um, a very successful Cato Kalin. <laughs> she, she was Nobody knew anything about her. She was very mysterious, and they liked to have her around. Are you fascinated at all by the Simpson business? I hate to admit I am, yeah. on lots of levels. What level? <sighs> that, well, on the justice level, yeah. watching all of that, um, you know, the operation <laughs> success, the, yeah. the patient dies. But um, on the human nature level, it was amazing to me. And, uh, and about celebrity in America. All right? of that, all of that, and, and, and the attitudes of everybody. And I mean, I just, I found the it so... The racial divide. Yeah. It was interesting. We were shooting Portrait when the verdict came in, and it was 10 o'clock at night for us, and I guess very early in the morning. And um, I said to Jane, uh, the verdict's coming in, and, sh and she said, um, oh, O.J. Johnson? And I loved her so much for not knowing. She did nothing. <laughs> she didn't know. I mean, yeah. she had known, but yeah. she just didn't, you know, she was into the movie, well, as I, I was I. Yeah. And I went over, and I had to act. I was acting, and I didn't get to hear the verdict. But when I came over, came over to the monitor, uh, he was laughing, and I knew. And I, I looked at the faces of the people around me, because we were working with Europeans, and I got from their comments that they, they, uh, 
that they were horrified. And it felt embarrassing to me as an American. Yeah. Um, the, you mentioned Jane, and, and as a director, and, and lobbying, and auditioning, and, and, you know, and convincing her that you were right for the part. <laughs> it took a long and, time. It was six months. Yeah, and you didn't know for, how did they finally tell you? Did she call you up, or did somebody tell your agent and no, your agent called No, it was really a wonderful, it's a great question, because uh, it went on for six months. I had a four-hour audition, and, and in it, we went all over the place, because you could play this character a thousand ways. And I didn't have a conclusive feeling when I left, and uh, I sent her another thing I had done to show her what a uh, you know, finished something would be like versus this search we went through. And um, I kept hearing other names, and... I, I'd always come this close to this kind of part, and it always went to someone more famous or hotter at the moment or whatever. And so I didn't have hope, and I was trying to have hope. And it was very long, these six months. And finally, one day, I come home from the grocery store, and I get a call from my agent and uh, call her back. And I call her, and she says, uh, I say, it's Barbara. And she says, Barbara Hershey? And I said, yes. And she said, it's March 11th, it's 5.22 in the afternoon, and you've just gotten portrait of a lady. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was really sweet of her to do it that way. I'll never forget all of that now. Yeah. And when you were preparing for it, the Jane would come to you, and the two of you, did she say something to you like, uh, can I spend a couple of days with you? Yes. It, it was extraordinary because usually I have to do my work pretty much alone and hope to get some talks with the director because he, he is yeah. so busy. And she, very early on, like months before the movie began, uh, called me and said, can I spend two days with you alone? And I, I said, yeah, can you? And I'm usually begging for an hour. And we went through an extraordinary two days where we did a lot of work that I would normally do myself and then hit the set or the rehearsal and wonder if I went in the right direction. This way, we did a lot of it together. We created a history for the character. I constantly went to the book. I became the James Police. I actually worked back in oh, the James a lot. Police. Yeah. yeah, I call him Hank now. Yeah, right. And and we, I if, worked. If it wasn't authentic. You were there to remind him. Yeah, I had. Yes, she would roll her eyes finally when she saw me coming, um, and and we uh, just created this character. We improvised together. We we told each other about our lives. We acted together. She showed me her notes. She would show me abstract things like paintings that suggested something to her. She showed me a bowl of fruit, a paint. It sounds silly to most people, but I got it immediately and said, this is, this is her. I understood because there was something evocative about the painting. But that kind of, I'd never had a director. She works in the prepared way, but she also works in very kind of subliminal, abstract ways that were amazing. Here is a scene where I want to get to a scene here. This is a um, scene, you know, what do you want me to do with her? This is where you meet with uh, Gilbert Osmond. Uh, it was played by John Malkovich, and, and um, it explains itself. Roll tape. What do you want to do with him? The character is so interesting that doesn't necessarily do justice to all that you do with this character. Um, let me talk about directing, though. I mean, you seem to be somebody, as you said yourself, who, who wants to just grab the director and get squeeze everything you can out of the director to find out. And when you think about it, look at the people you work with. Woody, Scorsese, Jane. I mean, and they all have different styles. Don't Completely. You? Yeah. How so? Well, Woody doesn't like to talk at all, which I found out in a very funny... By the time he starts shooting? Even before. Oh. And I love talking with a director because I like... You know the statue where everybody's trying to get the flag, the Iwo Jima, Iwo Jima statue? I feel like movie making's like that, the crew involved, everyone. Mm. But we're after the same goal, and I always want to make sure that he, uh, or she in this case, uh, is after the same thing I feel, or, mm. or I want to also do what they want. But I mean, I just want to make sure we have the same goal and, and, and talk. And sometimes I like to let them know where I think I'm headed. And Woody doesn't like to talk at all. He said finally he told me that he would just answer anything to get me to shut up. <laughs> and then when I finally realized that, I stopped talking. But he's such an amazing writer that you don't need a lot of direction. You need some guidance. But, but do you, you think know. he's an amazing director? I do, but in a very, 
very unique way. I, I don't think it would work for other directors, but he's such an, uh, a, an individual. Why is it everybody wants to work with him? I think because, well, because of the films, but yeah. because they're, they're unique, they're varied, he's prolific. Yeah, once a year he makes one. Uh, he's one of the few. Actually, these three directors you named are directors who actually express themselves with film, which a lot of directors in America, anyway, don't, don't get or seem to do. Um, not only is there a point of view, but there's a whole true expression. Portrait is Jane's expression, and, um, you know, Marty is all over his films. I mean, it's, it's, it's them. And also, he writes women, Woody, like no other American does, I think, in terms of making them human beings and, and individual characters. And why do you think he understands? I don't know. I mean, I think he's a genius, and I hate that word because it's so overused, but I actually think he is. I think those three are. Um, it, I, I don't know. I, it amazes me because he lives sort of an insular life, and he must be the most amazing observer. How does he know all of this? How does he know? I think also he loves women as people, as human beings, and thinks of them as human beings, and writes of them as human beings, and it may be as simple as that, but uh, it's a mystery to me. Well, and so much of what his psyche is about yeah. women. But so are so many of our psyches about that situation, you yeah. know, the, the, the unanswerable question about men and women. Yeah. Where do you think you have come to in terms of a career? I don't know. Uh, I'm probably the last person to know because I can't get a big view on myself. I've no I the one thing I've concentrated on always is variety. Since the very beginning, I've always wanted to play different characters in different kinds of movies. And I've managed to. Uh, but I have no idea other than continuing that. Was it hard to overcome that image you had, whatever it was some time ago, you know, that sort of blight free spirit that <laughs> named your kid at whatever it was at the time? Flower child. Flower child. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did, was that, did that, in a sense, follow you for a while? Oh, for a while. It still follows me because people who interview me read in their research old articles and, and then so they, they want bring, to talk about and that. And so it continues it because yeah. what's so funny to me is that it happened, uh, you know, a quarter of a century ago. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's almost like continually focusing on the fourth grade or something. You know what it is? It's I because people who do the stuff, they read the same clips and they all and then talk it about it. You know, yeah. And that's all they can talk about because yeah, there's no of, sense of having a conversation. It's only about <laughs> what they read in this. Yeah. And, and to me, I mean, it's, it was a very innocent, fine time that yeah. I passed through like thousands of other Americans. Yeah. What do you, I mean, I, I don't know if you can answer this, but obviously you're very proud of this because of, of the response to it yeah. and where it, what it might mean for you and then the evolution that you're going through yourself and, and, to, and, and John Malkovich and... Uh, Nicole Kidman. And, and Nicole Kidman. Uh, and everybody, and, and Martin every, Donovan. You know, and amazing. to work with Jane and one more time to work with another great director. Uh, but if, when you look at those things that you have done, what resonates with you most? Not mean, what's the best and not what's the, I mean, you know, what is it that the role that you said, was it be, what might it be? What, a specific role? Yeah. You know, I don't have one because I have maybe five or six because they're all different mm -hmm. and they're like, and you're all they're different. like, and they're, they're like children. I mean, it'd be hard to pick. I like different ones for different reasons, but, uh, um. And then why do you like this one? I think because of the variety within the character, I also, again, I think contradictions are the most, I think it's one of the things that makes us interesting. I'd never read a more contradictory character that there are more contradictory things going on in her head at every moment in every scene, uh, total polarities. And that you could look back on the movie knowing what you know at the end and see all of that. Yeah. Um, and also the arc of her to start in the, in the beginning, in the sunlight, playing the piano, and end in the darkness, in the sh in the shadow, in the rain, yeah. and and but psychologically as well. And to have that arc as a character was a great chance. Thanks for coming. Thanks. <laughs> Barbara Hershey, Portrait of Lady. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.